A Letter to Vincent Van Gogh. Vincent, I hardly know where to start. Your beautiful expressiveness, your poetic letters to Theo, your brother, your wise and educated days, your aspirations for the ministry, but through it all, your simple passion, found most of all in ordinary folk, the peasants, their great connection with earth and air, their connection with color and light, but yet by the end of your short life, your senses were troubled, twisted, and mute. But those earlier days, how you would sit or stand before a canvas, a wild spirit in your brushes like a great cat scratching at the world with its talons to draw blood and make it see, to show it the extraordinary qualities of ordinary things, the shimmering orange of daisy petals, fields of grain in the yellow sun, the days of Arl when creation was bright. Dear Vincent, how we seldom realize your loneliness lying on that handmade bed, staring upward in the dark, in waking moments in the night, your heartache like a partly formed nightmare, the coldness of your winter room, your ice cold feet, your shivering, as you held yourself against the day, beginning gray, that simple bed in your rustic hewn, hewn room, like an old friend from childhood. So if you knew you in that town in southern France in Arles, so far from home, yet you come to life with pigments on your palate, in Arles where you felt rich with heat and sun and orange and yellow and white, and you were absorbed in your trance-like state as you fathered heaven and earth on your canvas. Your main companion was your pipe, using the last of your tobacco till your brother Theo sent you more for your meager life. But you were alone, no woman lover to kiss and smile and hold you close. The wild failure of your days with Paul Gauguin, your bony cheeks and light red-brown hair and skin, not handsome. And who would know the spirits had placed the terrified universe in your soul? Yes, your soul, to let you mold it to a beauty so like rough hewn nature herself and make you feel the ache of beauty too great to encompass. Yet you tried through the months you struggled to be the little god you were. And now we tell you across the grave how awesome was your capture of creation in all its native ways, so true and pure and rough and soil, and yet how you greeted spring afresh each time it came. But Vincent, how we misunderstood you how we have raised you to the planet Saturn with its rings of icy fire like a crown for you, and your grubby works have been dusted off and sold to poverty-stricken millionaires, and as though money was a measure of your peasant power over the heat of the day and its colors, as though millions were a measure of you, a declared value of your mixture of pain and bright colors with roots in your babyhood that you brought to life again and again, a hundred again. Such penetrating understanding of the foliage of the earth. How in your life you sold but one pathetic canvas, one. As though to underscore how little you were noticed then. Yet, how could you realize your mastery in your endless lonely days, your nights that finally let a madness creep in, the souring of your bloom? into spiral shapes, the black crows, the angels of your impending death, the one that came by your own hand. Yes, after you could bear no more, no more desolation in your chest, how you needed at last to draw a final curtain against the pain. With you never imagining once what your ultimate worldwide triumph would be, you peasant spokesman for it all, so unrecognized in your years, but now at last, uh, half a century later, I have my hand on your shoulder, and though you look at me in disbelief just now, I will take you to museums and you shall see for yourself. But we will go at night when we will not be seen and will disturb no one.
And then at last, the next afternoon, we will have a glass of wine together, you and I, a glass of wine together.